Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware Corsair sent me over this brand new case to do a video on. So uh, it is called the Crystal Series 570X. It is a completely tempered glass covered case, a trend that I'm gonna take complete responsibility for since I did my tempered glass side panel mod with Arctic Panther. But I figured what better way to go over this case for you guys than to, well, take it out of the box first of all. I'll run down the features and I'll go ahead and build the system in it. I've got all the parts for that right back here. And then we'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. All right, so I have removed all of the tempered glass side panels from this case. I was originally gonna show you guys like a first look of it with everything, uh, with nothing mounted inside, but then I realized all those tempered glass pieces, which are over on the table there, uh, all have like the plastic on them. And I was gonna like peel all that off and stuff, but I decided no, let me wait on doing that and build the system first, because even though tempered glass is a lot sturdier than uh, Plexi, um, it's still best to kind of keep that stuff on, but there are four tempered glass panels, uh, one for each side, one for the top, and one for the front, and they are all held on by these little screws out here, which are pretty good quality and look uh, pretty nice from the outside. Also, of course, you get a pack of accessories in the box. So if it's not obvious already, this case is definitely designed for somebody who wants to have a good look at everything going on inside their computer, not just from the side, but also from the uh, other side where the cable management goes, even from up on top and of course from the front. So uh, let's quickly run down the features. Why don't we start with dust filters since they're covering things right now. These are pretty easy to pop off, at least once you remove the four screws for the tempered glass side panels. These are just held on by magnets. And look at that full coverage right there with uh, plenty of space for the air to flow through. Uh, and then behind it, the three 120 millimeter fans. We'll come back to those in just a moment. Uh, this top also removes, again, just with magnets like so. So full coverage with dust filtration for the top. And then we do have a dust filter down on the bottom. It is a little bit more standard style, at least from what we've seen in the past. Slides up from the back and a bit smaller one there for your power supply. Back to those fans up front though, it comes with 320 millimeter fans included and these are all RGB, which I'm sure I will demonstrate once I get this uh, case actually set up with the system inside and able to power on and everything. Uh, they're all in the front, so you actually don't get any at least pre-installed exhaust or filtration for the rear or the top of this case, but you do have lots of uh, radiator support. So you can do uh, 360 in the front, you can do a 280 in the front, of course you could do a 240 or 120 or anything less than uh, those max radiator sizes. Uh, you can also do a 280 or 240 in the top, or a 120 of course, and then you got a 120 mount here at the back as well. Now the other nice thing about these radiator mounts, at least the front one, uh, you can actually remove the entire fan mounts with these thumb screws. So it's got thumb screws going up and down here. You can pull that tray off and that will allow you to mount your radiator and the fans to it and then just install the whole tray, which is a pretty convenient way of installing uh, radiators and fans for a liquid cooling solution, of course. Actually, one quick correction here. Uh, I mentioned that front tray is removable for mounting the radiators. Uh, the top tray is removable as well. And then uh, they're saying that this will fit a 240 millimeter radiator and it might fit a 280 millimeter meter, meter, millimeter radiator, uh, just depending on the size and bulbousness at the end and how big the, the pieces are that come off of it and stuff. But you do have some flexibility there, but at least they are confirming 240 millimeter rad support. I'm gonna try to fit a 280 up here. The power supply does have a cover down here. It's maybe about two thirds the length, length of the chassis and it is open on this side. So you could bring cables out through this direction or most likely you'll pass them back through there to use the cable management solution that's on the back. There is a Corsair, Corsair uh, LED logo that will light up here that's also gonna be plugged in. Didn't say RGB, so I'm guessing this is just white, but again, I'll test that in just a moment. And there is uh, some ventilation on the top of your power supply cage just in case you wanted to put your power supply with the fan facing up if that is something that you feel will work better for your airflow. Of course, you got the uh, little rubber mounts down there for the power supply feet. And then on the back, you have your typical layout, seven expansion slots, that 120 millimeter fan mount, IO shield, all that good stuff. Uh, not a huge case, a pretty standard ATX layout from the internal perspective. But again, I think the tempered glass and some of the cable management features uh, are what Corsair is feeling makes this case unique. 
As for clearance, uh, this direction you have up to 370 millimeters of length uh, for GPU clearance, so you can go with really long GPUs. Uh, for your depth, this way you have 170 millimeters of clearance for CPU coolers. And then for the power supply down here, uh, 225 millimeters, so pretty much any modern reasonable power supply that you would put in a gaming system will fit in this case. I also want to point out down here, they at least have advertised um, some mounting points for uh, pumps or reserv and reservoirs. So um, I don't know if this is a standard layout for uh, you know your D5 pumps or anything like that, but there are some slots down there. So if you would put a pump or a big tall reservoir or something, you could mount it to the bottom there theoretically. And that's probably going to be a popular solution, solution for anyone who's water cooling in this case, because, uh, well, that, that's where it would fit pretty much. There's nowhere else to put it. Uh, your buttons and I.O. for the front are on the front and kind of off to the right, so you've got a power button of course right there. Three buttons uh, for controlling the RGB fans, so it's nice to be able to control those manually with buttons rather than having to rely on software. Uh, but you have brightness, speed, and then cycling through the different available presets that can, the uh, built-in controller has available. Uh, headphone and mic jack of course, and then we have two USB 3.0 ports. And then here is the flip side, so you can see that controller, uh, which is connected up right here, and then there's a smaller piece right here. So this actually has three of the fans already plugged in, with space for three more, so if you buy more of those RGB fans that are compatible with this, then you could put them elsewhere in the case and control them all with this unit. This has a little piece that goes off over to here, with sort of a breakout box, and here you can, again, control speed, color, and mode. And then that's got another lead that goes up to the top, so you can control it via those buttons up top that I just showed you. As for drive support, you basically have four drive uh, bays. Two of them are 3.5 inch drive mounts over here on the side with the typical pop in from the side. I'm not a fan of this drive mounting method. These are also plastic trays, I want to point out, so um, that definitely could have been better, but I guess they are a bit lighter if you want to look on the bright side. And they are all black, so they're not going to stand out as noticeably glaringly plastic or anything like that. These will fit 3.5 inch drives and 2.5 inch drives, then two more 2.5 inch drive mounts right here. Again, plastic trays, but they'll get the job done. All of these are toolless for the most part, at least uh, they're all held on with a, thing a, a, thingle thumb th a single thumb screw. Uh, lastly, over here we have this cable management bracket thing, which is basically just like kind of a, a U-shaped piece of metal that is held on to the uh, motherboard tray, again with a couple thumb screws. Uh, not the most elegant solution I would say, but um, again you're just using it to pass cables through. And we're going to see um, as far as access goes, because there's some space up here at the top, and then of course this covers the actual grommet mounts in there, so you'll be able to pass them through from that little thing through there. Um, I'm going to see if this is easy to work with or if this is a pain in the butt to work with. I think maybe it might be a little bit of a combination of both, but in the end, hopefully it will lead to pretty looking cable management, because this is definitely the kind of case you're going to need to pay attention to cable management with. All right, enough talking. Let me build this.
Okay, so the build is complete. Everything's on. Uh, really didn't have too many issues as far as the build process goes. Everything was fairly straightforward, apart from the slightly more delicate use of these tempered glass side panel windows. Uh, the tempered glass itself I would describe as gray glass rather than that ultra clear glass. Um, which I believe is slightly less expensive, at least in my experience, purchasing tempered glass. But it does give a little bit of a tint, so you can kind of see anything that lights up and shines inside uh, peeking through. So you can see I used uh, the same MSI motherboard and graphics card that I used for uh, the build in the 760T recently, and everything looks pretty nice. Also, we have a red and black color scheme going on. And then, of course, the three fans up in the front all shine through. Uh, right now, they're all white. I can change the color, though. The so color cycle goes from white to red to orange to, I believe, yellow to green to blue uh, to purple, and then it will do a cycle and it'll, it'll just kind of jump from one to the other. Uh, of course, you can also change the speed. Uh, so that first button was for changing the color. The next one changes the speed, so that'll change the speed at which it, which it changes colors or whatever effect you might choose. So right now I have just chosen the effect for uh, it's, it's gonna glow, it's gonna breathe, very standard RGB lighting LED effects. Uh, and then of course I can cycle through those. So we have the flashing one, which I hate and should never be used. Uh, and then I believe we have a more soft faded effect that, that it goes through as well. Very cool. Anyway, uh, and then of course back to solid color. So if I switch this to all white, let's do red for example. And then I should be able to change it to like pulse red. Pulse, flash, breathe. And right now it's going very fast, so if I was like, that's too fast for me, I hit the speed button and then it slows down a little bit. Gives me something a little bit more reasonable. Now apart from those lights, there are also a couple highlight lights. So down here at the very bottom, uh, we've got the Corsair logo. It has a white LED behind it, so that shines through the front of the case. I thought that was a nice touch. And then of course that Corsair logo on the power supply. So even if you're not using a Corsair power supply, you've still got a Corsair power supply. Those are both white. Uh, it's kind of a shame that those are so also aren't RGB with everything else, but if you're gonna have it be any color, white would be the best choice since you have different colors going on. <laughs> okay, we had a brief emergency with the dogs, but uh, everything seems to have settled down now. Continuing on though, just uh, some final comments about the fact that everything is tempered glass on this case. All right, one is gonna be that you are gonna be dealing with fingerprints. Now, uh, if you have used Plexi, yes, Plexi will get fingerprints as well. Nice thing here is that you can just wipe them off with a, with a nice cloth and uh, you shouldn't get any micro scratches or anything like that, again, since it's tempered glass. But it also uh, kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to find good places to pick up the case, I noticed. Like for instance, I almost grabbed it down here a couple times, which would not be a good thing. Uh, really you wanna grab from underneath and just lift from the bottom like you would with a, uh, with a box or something like that. Um, mainly because these mounts, specifically for the front one here, and the top one here have kind of standoffs from the actual panel that they're connected to, and those are plastic. And then the, the, plex, the I'm sorry, the uh, tempered glass is mounted to the plastic. Those seem like they might be a little flimsy over time. They were adequate, but uh, I would want to be delicate with them. And it, and you definitely don't want to like lift by right here because that would put some serious strain on those, and you might snap off the little mounting points. A nice little touch though that I noticed was that the tempered glass pieces are either a bit more squared or a bit more rounded, and that is so that they will uh, go up flush nicely with the different parts of the case. Like this little uh, connective piece right here, you want the squared off one so that stays clean. Same thing with right here. Uh, and then whereas at the bottom, this one has the rounded corner because it's kind of floating out in space, and that makes more sense. Same thing on this one, more squared corner down here at the bottom where it uh, meets up with the other elements of the case, whereas it's got the rounded corner up here at the top, which, uh, ju yeah, ju just, Looks nicer, I think. It's a nice touch. As far as airflow goes, uh, you are going to be dealing with a mainly open air type of uh, chassis. You're not gonna really have much in the way of pressure building up in here, pretty much because everywhere that these uh, tempered glass pieces sit, there is a gap uh, to some degree. So it's pretty much just open between those, which is fine. Um, but I actually think that the intake configuration that they have with three fans just up front is gonna be just fine. Okay, I removed the side panel windows to give a few comments on the interior. The first thing you might notice is my Turner 80 millimeter radiator here at the top uh, was not, or was a little too big. Uh, mainly, I was dealing with a space clearance between the uh, heat sink for the VRM on the motherboard and the fan here. So I'm actually still running it, um, but I only have a single fan attached here. I was able to get enough clearance by removing that second fan. What I was gonna do is just grab a 140 
130 or a 120 millimeter rad and put it up here up there and then i realized now nah, i can still fit this um so i'll just do it just to show you guys that's a 280 millimeter radiator it does have some shift uh, shift ability this way and that way but not forward to back so uh, you definitely will have some issues with certain motherboards with clearance particular up particularly up in this area and there's no space up above here to mount fans or anything like that so I would say stick with the 280 up top for most people unless you're really trying to figure out how to wedge something in there or you really have a lot of clearance for your motherboard up top um, beyond that you do have tons of space up here in the front for like you know, 240, 280, 360. Um, so that would be probably a better option if you really needed a lot of radiator space in here. Uh, or again, just stick with that 240 on top. Uh, I also wanna say for the power supply shroud area down here, you can kind of see through it back there a little bit. And this is really one of the main areas to tuck away extra cables. So you can see a little bit through there, but I find that it wasn't really too big of a deal. I'd much rather have the shroud there than not, of course. One thing I found particularly annoying was the lack of any cable routing areas through here um, on this side of the motherboard in this corner. There's really nothing. So all these cables you pretty much have to run across here and then get back to tuck back into the cables this direction. It's not that big of a deal, but there's nothing to really tie them down to. So I was dealing with this situation where I just had to try to lay them as flat as possible and tuck them back there. A minor gripe, but um, something that I've gotten a little bit more used to on some other cases. There is fortunately a pass-through up there at the top for your 8-pin uh, CPU connector. And finally, a look at the ever-important cable management area here at the back. I invested a decent amount of time in cable management, but definitely wasn't as incredibly thorough as I could have been because they have done some nice things like putting tie down points all the way around the edge of the uh, CPU cutout on the motherboard tray, uh, and they've given you a decent amount of options given that you're really limited on where you can hide stuff. Again, most of your extra cables are going to need to be tucked away in here as best you can, so that might mean that a not quite as long power supply would be a better option. It would at least give you a little bit more room back there. I like how you can have fancy nice SSDs displayed right here, or even mechanical drives if you're into that, uh, or SSDs even right there and that people can actually see your storage, which is often tucked away. And then the cable management uh, routing kind of bar thing here. I like that it's removable. It does a good job keeping everything tidy and tucked away in there, but it was, as kind of would be expected, uh, a pretty decent amount of work to get everything routed properly to really have it mostly through there and then any excess cable kind of doubling back in there and whatnot. But the fact that you can remove it with those thumb screws and then pop it back on once you have everything routed uh, was definitely a bonus, a benefit, and I, I like that method. And as you probably saw as I was doing the build, there are Velcro straps at least in a couple places behind here. So as you're routing stuff, you can kind of cinch it down and uh, get it to the point where you can actually put that piece back on. Oh, and I also shouldn't go without mentioning this. The fan hub is not technically necessarily a fan hub, so don't consider using it as a fan hub. This controls only the LED lighting, and although it can control up to six fans, those fans need to have these plugs, which are proprietary, I believe, from uh, Corsair, coming off them to go into the controller. That's just for the LEDs, and they also have three more individual three-pin fan plugs coming off of them that you will need to plug into the motherboard or some other uh, source of power. So bear that in mind. Uh, if you were planning on using this as your fan hub, no, it's only for the, uh, the, the LEDs. So that that's not a bad thing, but don't, don't be buying this thinking it has a fan hub integrated. Okay, actually one final, final thing, and that is that this does not have a reset button. So bear that in mind as well. Uh, no reset and actually no hard drive LED uh, connector either. So all you have is the power button and when your system goes to sleep, like mine is right now, that will flash, um, which is pretty normal for a system that has gone to sleep. And uh, just so you know, this little LED down here is connected to that too. So that will also act as your flashing power LED. And that just about wraps it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Corsair 570X from their Crystal Series featuring tempered glass and RGB fans as well as a lighting controller. This case costs about $179 MSRP. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. So let me know in the comment section what you think of that price, if you think it's worth it for this case. Also let me know what you think of the tempered glass thing. It seems to be a trend that's been gaining some steam, much like the RGB thing started to gain a bunch of steam last year. I don't mind the tempered glass, but uh, I'm certainly still warming up to having tempered glass on every side of the case, but it does provide a little bit more of a challenge when you're doing a build and you know that you're going to have a very clear view of that opposite side with the cable management. So perhaps a case for people who have done this a few times and 
are confident in their cable management skills. Once again, though, leave me comments in the comment section. Let me know what you think of this case and the tempered glass thing. Uh, also down in the description, you can find links to my store where you can buy shirts, mugs, and pint glasses to help the cause. And of course, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And I'll post a link to this case as well down in the description, as well as a list of all the parts that I used. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.